This is a video on jaundice in the newborn. Now there are a number of causes of jaundice in newborns, but this is a selection that I thought is most helpful to differentiate in a baby's first two or three weeks of life. Um, I've kind of arranged these in order of increasing severity. Uh, so as we go down, they'll get worse, and then there's just kind of assorted miscellaneous conditions that also cause jaundice at the bottom here. So let's get started with physiologic jaundice, which is also known as benign neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. And this is actually the preferred term now, benign neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. Now the pathophysiologist of this is uh, threefold. There's firstly fetal red blood cells <clears throat> that are high at birth, and those tend to have higher turnover, or excuse me, quicker turnover, so they last maybe 90 days instead of like 120 days, so that leads to increased bilirubin production. Secondly, the enzyme that conjugates bilirubin, this UGT, uridine, diphospho, whatever, that um, doesn't have the adult levels until about two weeks of life, so the baby's conjugating bilirubin at a suboptimal or lower than adult rate for the first two weeks of life. Thirdly, the baby has low bacteria in the gut at birth, because remember that the baby's sterile when it's um, in the womb, so that results in high enterohepatic cycling, um, which, is, which leads to a slow conversion of bilirubin to urobilinogen for fecal excretion. So um, those three things kind of compound together to cause this physiologic jaundice picture. The signs and symptoms of this, um, it's a jaundice that appears in the first week. It usually increases for the first few days, but then it'll decline to adult levels by about the third week. It's usually self-limited, um, and it doesn't really cause too many problems. On labs or diagnosis, you'll notice an indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Again, you have this problem conjugating bilirubin, so that makes it indirect. Um, usually it doesn't get too high, usually no higher than 18. Uh, depending on the newborn nursery, the treatment manager of this might have you do phototherapy. Um, every nursery kind of has their own thresholds. In general, you want to keep feeding the baby, you want to get them to build up that um, bacterial colonization of the gut and make sure it resolves. Um, keep an eye on it, essentially, but usually not, not that big of an issue. Next is breastfeeding jaundice, or it should actually be called breastfeeding failure jaundice. Um, it's essentially caused by failure of breastfeeding. If a baby does not have enough breast milk intake, they are um, excreting less bilirubin, so they're eliminating less bilirubin into their gut, <clears throat> and their gut doesn't have enough um, bacteria to, again, do that same conversion of, bil of bilirubin to urobilinogen, and that results in high enterohepatic circulation again. Um, what makes this one distinct is that the baby isn't feeding well, so they might report that when you talk to the parents. The baby will also be dehydrated. They might have a sunken fontanelle. They might have decreasing wet diapers by day. Remember that a newborn for the first week of life should be um, wetting one diaper for every day since it was born. So a three-day-old baby should have at least three wet diapers, and if it isn't, it might be dehydrated. Um, so this jaundice is going to get worse for the first week. Um, baby might have excessive weight loss, maybe 10, 15, 20 percent of its weight will be lost in the first few days, which is which is too much. Labs, kind of similar. Um, well, a lot of these first three are, are just similar. They're clinical diagnoses with indirect hyperbilirubinemia. The treatment here is to increase the frequency and duration of breastfeeding. Um, if it gets really bad, you can supplement with formula, but in general, baby needs to be eating a little bit better. Once it does, you'll kind of ramp up um, the amount of bilirubin eliminated, and it gets better. Next is breast, breast milk jaundice. Now this one is distinct. <clears throat> this one is from having a sufficient amount of breast milk, and breast milk contains this enzyme beta-glucuronidase, which deconjugates intestinal bilirubin and allows for reabsorption. So again, you're increasing the enterohepatic circulation, but through a different mechanism. This time you have enough breast milk that has an enzyme that deconjugates it and allows you to reabsorb it. So the signs and symptoms, jaundice in this case starting around days three to five, it usually peaks at two weeks and you'll have no dehydration. So uh, breastfeeding failure jaundice is dehydrated. Breast milk jaundice is feeding well, not dehydrated. Labs are the same, uh, indirect hyperbilirubinemia, and it's a clinical diagnosis. <clears throat> These kids will usually, you just have them keep breastfeeding. You can do phototherapy, again, based on the um, physicians or the, or the nursery or the pediatrician's phototherapy thresholds. It's usually not necessary. Next, this is, these last two are a little more severe, hemolytic disease of the newborn. 
This is caused by an ABO or RH incompatibility that essentially causes a hemolytic anemia um, where the red blood cells are broken open, releasing bilirubin into the blood. This one is distinct because it'll present with high bilirubin on the first day of life. And oftentimes the rate of rise of the bilirubin is pretty high, uh, up to five, sorry, at least five a day. Um, for hemolytic disease of the newborn. The diagnosis here will be made with a Coombs test first. If the Coombs test is positive, then you could blood type and screen. Um, you could do a blood test, type and screen for the baby. Um, and you'll often find that the baby has A or B blood or AB blood, and mom will have O blood, um, leading to that ABO incompatibility. Treatment here is a little more aggressive. You'll do phototherapy, you can do IVIG, you can do an exchange transfusion in severe cases as well. Lastly, biliary atresia. This is a structural deficit. <clears throat> you have abnormal underdevelopment of the extrahepatic biliary system, and it uh, results in extrahepatic bile duct fibrosis. The presentation here will be worsening jaundice over the first few weeks of life. Patients or the parents might also report pale stools and dark urine. Baby won't be gaining weight as much as it should, um, and it could end up with jaundice or sorry with cirrhosis from this um, as as the jaundice gets worse. The labs here will show a direct hyperbilirubinemia. They're able to conjugate it. They're not able to excrete it because they don't have that extrahepatic biliary system. They essentially don't have bile ducts. Um, they might also not have a, a, a gallbladder as well. The abdominal ultrasound <clears throat> will show exactly this, absent or abnormal liver or common bile ducts. The gold standard test, which isn't done all the time, is the intraoperative cholangiography, which will show biliary obstruction. And you can also do a biopsy, also not very um, common to do a biopsy for this, but that would show intrahepatic duct proliferation, inflammation, edema, and fibrosis. The surgery for this is, uh, sorry, the treatment for this is surgery. They, they definitely need surgery. It's a hepatoportoenterostomy, also known as a Kasai procedure. And another alternative is a transplant, um, depending on how much the liver is affected, depending on uh, the, the degree of fibrosis. So those are the ones that I think are important to differentiate. As I said, there are several other causes of jaundice in the newborn. There are some genetic causes of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. That's Gilbert and krigler najjar syndrome. Gilbert syndrome is kind of a benign cause. It's a, it's a deficiency in UDP gluconeuronal transferase, the enzyme that conjugates bilirubin. Um, and oftentimes it's triggered by a cold or a light stressor. Um, and it causes the patient to be jaundiced for a few days and kind of self-resolves. krigler najjar is a worse form of Gilbert, but also very rare. The conjugated genetic causes are Dubin-Johnson and Roeder, and you can differentiate these by seeing black liver on pathology. That's a, a board association that might be worth knowing. Uh, black liver on pathology and Dubin-Johnson syndrome. Some metabolic conditions also cause jaundice in the newborn. Hypothyroid, hypopituitary, and galactosemia. You also have infectious causes like the congenital infections, the torch infections, and sepsis. Those will uh, obviously have some uh, inflammatory signs and symptoms and, and lab markers as well. And cystic fibrosis can also present with jaundice, but this also presents with sinopulmonary infections, and uh, you might even identify this on a neonatal screen as well. So this was just a short video on jaundice in the newborn. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for listening.